everyone and welcome to the magical world of mushroom marvelous and your live reading of book two book two i've got something amazing to tell you what i'm going to try and do is be very technical here while i wait for the families to come and join us and i'm going to share myself onto my personal profile hello robin hello hello because i know there's lots of people from my group who are going to come and join us tonight with their children um and I want to really spread this as far as possible. I've got some amazing things to tell you about. I've actually finished all my illustrations. Hello, Angela, you've seen us. I was having a panic before because I was like, oh God, will this thing is go live on yet? So, uh, I've finished all the illustrations. It's so exciting. There you go. 67 illustrations I've done, right? I've got a wad of them here. Hello, Jordi. Hello, everyone. I've got a word of them here. But before I get onto that and show you some stuff, and before I do the reading, my name's Kylie Dixon. I am the creator of the magical world of Mushroom Marvelous. Thank you for joining us tonight, right? Because this is an exclusive reading of book two, which is the second book in my children's book series, which is about a secret world of mushroom characters that live in my dad's allotment. And my dad, I need to tell you, is referred to I was known in this, the magical world of Mushroom Marvelous, hello everyone, as The Grump, okay? This book, book two, I still kind of believe that I'm writing book two, I've illustrated book two, all right? Hello, Rebecca, hello everyone, thank you so much for sharing, right? It's so, so amazing. Um, is It took us eight months, I've been working on this for eight months, and it's been like a 24-7 graft to get to this point, right? And I am just like... Oh my God, I'm here. Now then, the second book is called In Cap and the Blight of the Bonnets. It is coming out in October. I'm aiming for National Mushroom Day, which is the 15th of October. <clears throat> and I just want everyone to enjoy a really, really positive and lush story. I'm so proud of what I've done. It has now been proofread. It is currently getting designed and typeset but i've got the final illustrations here that i'm going to send over to some special people who i'll thank at the end thank you sarah thank you katie katie is lucy there with you hello jordy from dark sky sleepovers you're absolutely awesome for sharing this out right okay now there's something really special about book two which i haven't really told anyone yet now i have told some of you that it has a map in Right, so when I when I was growing up, I absolutely loved books with maps in, right? Because I used to sit and just imagine myself in the map. So that is a map of the allotment. All right, I'm probably going to be hiding hiding around a lot of these, and that's going to be in the front of the book. But there's also going to be a secret quest, right? So in Cap is the main character, and he features throughout all of the books. Hello, Laura. Um, and there's a secret in cap quest, right? So which is in the book. Um, we're going to do something really, really special at the beginning of the book. We might be at the end of the book and everyone can come and join in a quest, right? And it's awesome. Yes. Oh, Laura doesn't even know about it. Okay. So because I'm going to start it from a section... And I'm going to show you my actual illustrators, illustrations as I go through. I'm going to show anyone who doesn't know who Incap is. This is Incap. He is the main... Oh, Amy's so excited. I'm buzzing for her. <clears throat> Incap is the main character. All right. He is the hero. But there's lots of other characters in there. And I will be talking about scales as well. And this is scales. All of my characters have been inspired by mushrooms. As you can see, I am in my little mushroom studio, Mushy Heights. And the way that this has gone has just been absolutely phenomenal. And I kind of thank you enough that I now do this as a job. It is just, it's blown my mind. All right. So this is a treat to use. All right. You can still order the books. They're all on the website. Um, and I won't stop writing marvellous mushroom stories at all. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Rebecca Finn. These are all on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll have a uh, drink before. I, I tried to like do it before I um, like practice before I came on. And um, hello, Denise. 
I had to hide behind the illustrations. So if you've got any kids, any um, grandchildren, right, this is for readers of about six to 11 year olds, right? But you can absolutely read it out like I'm doing right now to a younger audience. I know I have a younger audience watching as well because they love me illustrations. So here we go. Okay. There was a knock at the door. Incap woke startled. He felt something wet on his face. You were dreaming again, Scales stood next to him. I couldn't wake you up, Incap, so I um, I had no choice but to throw the leftover salt cup over you. He took a step back, not quite sure how Incap would react. What's happening, Incap said. What's that noise? He was still a little hazy from sleep as he struggled to his feet. Scales waited nervously for some kind of comeback from the unexpected shower he had just given his sleeping friend, but it never came. Incap seemed dazed for a few seconds, but quickly snapped out of it when the knocking returned. I've been trying to wake you, Scales said. There's someone out the front and I didn't dare look myself. Scales nodded his cap towards the crack they had both climbed through earlier that night, so the inn, Incap's house, in the plant pot. Incap scrabbled around to find his blowpipe. It had been knocked to the floor on his rude awakening. He placed it back in the corner of the room and made his way to the window. Outside, the night was still dark. He peered out and could just make out a teeny tiny silhouette amongst the grass. Thank you all for your love hearts and your sharing, you're amazing. Hello, Incap called. Who's there? Who's knocking at this time of night? Oh, Incap, you're here. A hushed, worried voice answered. It's terrible. You must come at once. We don't know what to do. Incap rubbed his eyes, adjusting them to the gloomy night. Immediately, he recognised the little mushroom who stepped into view. Army man's on. Hello, ma'am. Gillo, he said. The yellow mushy with the almost see-through cap nodded a sad expression on his face. Whatever's the matter, little one? Incap asked. It's Bella, Gillow replied. She has a fever. She's been like it since we got back from the caterpillar tasks this afternoon. Mother asked me to go and get help. A fever, you say? Incap queried. He turned back to Scales, waving him over. Yes, she wasn't feeling well after supper and got sleepy very quickly. Mother thought it was down to the cold and the wet, but it's got worse. So much worse. Please, we don't know what to do. Scales popped his head out of the window to see what all the fuss was about. Oh, hi, Gillow, he said, cheerfully, cheerfully at first. He was pleased to see it was a friendly face outside. Then he felt Incap poke him out of sight under the window ledge. Noticing the tears starting to well in little Gillow's eyes, Scales repeated in a more concerned tone, Oh, hi, Gillo. Incap could see Gillo struggling to hold the tears back. He hopped onto the window ledge, straightened his wide, white cap and gave him an encouraging smile. Now then, there'll be no tears tonight. Take us to Bella and your family. We shall see about this fever. Incap helped Scales clamber out of the window and they both took off down the gravel path, hurrying away behind the tiny yellow mushroom. Chapter five. I love this bit. At the bottom edge of the allotment, right next to the outer fence, there is a pile of fallen branches. The grump is often to be seen carrying these branches as he clears the ground around the old oak tree that leans over the allotment fence. Back he goes throughout the season, taking some of the more rotten wood to the compost heap. Incap is often amazed how that one little branch nestled under the hedge is always left behind. He can never work it out. It's as if the grump knows about their secret world and is somehow protecting it. Just like the mushrooms protect his garden. This decaying branch is where the Bonnet family live. It's known by the mushrooms as the Tuft. Now I can only fit this on here by doing that. The Tuft is home to many other mushrooms. If you look closely enough, you can see weeny windows of light and colour amongst doors of all shapes and sizes. There are higgledy-piggledy chimneys piping out smoke and steam from the welcoming warmth within. Yes, a bustling little network of mushy homes all connected within the wood. 
It may not sound very homely, but old rotten wood, rich in nutrients and moisture, is the perfect spot for mushrooms to live. Bonnet was an angel bonnet mushroom. She was delicate and beautiful with a dainty, light, olive green body. Her cap was one of the most exquisite caps to be seen in the magical world of Mushroom Marvellous. It was bell-shaped and flowing with elegant pleats and like Gillows and her other two children, it was almost see-through. Gillow, Brushen and Bella, two brothers and one sister all lived with their mother Bonnet in their house in the Tuft. Scales loved visiting the Tuft. There was something so comforting about its constant buzz of activity. He would imagine the families all sitting together, stories being told on cold dark nights just like tonight. But as Scales, Incap and Gillow reached the Tuft on this particular night, they were anxious about what they would find. It wasn't that far from Incap's, Incap's house, but in the chilly, damp weather of autumn, it seemed as though the three little mushrooms were walking forever. There wasn't much talk between them. A mixture of tiredness and uncertainty made them quiet and thoughtful. Scales attempted to bring up the subject of Incap's dream. Incap simply said, not now, we have more important things to worry about. Scales was rather put out by his friend's response. He had been meaning to ask about his recurring dream for a few days now. I'll get to the bottom of it, he thought to himself. It may not, not be right now, but I will find out what's disturbing your sleep. Bonnet's house was at the top of the tuft. You could tell which of the hundreds of hidden houses, let's see if I put it there, the hundreds of hidden houses was hers, as the roof was covered in green mossy spirals. There was a delicate autumn fern leaf arching over the moss swirls. It acted like an umbrella against raindrops. Incap, Scales and Gillow arrived. After clambering up the splintered damp wood, it was still dark in the allotment and Scales was mindful where he placed his clumsy pudding feet. The tuft's wood was still soft in places from the rainy season. Gillow was first through the little wooden archway leading into the main room of the Bonnet family home. Incap had to duck down a little under the arch to stop his hat from knocking against it. Scales followed behind, puffing and panting. The room glowed with a flickering fire. A tiny flame that burned in the centre of the room in a hole filled with dried moss. It was a sullen looking shadows on the it was sullen looking shadows on the wall that Incap noticed first. Bonnet hunched over with another little mushroom silhouette close at her side. Gillow ran to his family and put his arm around his brother. They were so alike, Gillow and Brushin, it was almost impossible to tell them apart. In fact, the only difference between them was the faint brown dots speckled down Brushin's front. Brushin often had to stop their mushies from talking to his tummy as they tried to spot them. Look, he came, Gillow pointed in the direction of the doorway. Incap has come to help us. And Scales, Incap noted, stepping further into the room. Gillow's told us of this fever, Bonnet. What's happened? Let me take a look. Bonnet stood tall and stepped back. She had been carefully wetting the top of Bella's cap and around her face with the edge of her own beautiful, glistening, bell-shaped cap. And around her face, sorry. Oh, in cap, she said. She shook her head and let the tall grey mushroom through to see. Poor Bella came home from the polytunnel tasks this afternoon and we just thought she was tired from working. Incap stepped closer to sleepy Bella lying near the fire's edge. She lay down to rest and after a few hours she started to complain of a fever, Bonnet went on. Her brothers were tired too but were fine after a rest and some salt cup. The two yellow-bellied brothers nodded in unison. Incap placed his hand on Bella's brow. Her skin, which was a lighter colour green than her mother's, was hot to touch. Bella, he said, taking his hand away. It's Incap. Can you hear me? He spoke very softly as not to startle her. Bella's little chest puffed up and down and she rolled onto her side, letting out a gasp. Bella, Incap tried again. Oh, I'm getting a few goosebumps. Tell me how you feel, little one. Can you open your eyes? They all waited patiently as Bella slowly opened one of them. When she recognised who was kneeling beside her, she managed to open her other eye. Hot, she whispered. So hot. Shh now, said Incap. 
then if it's hot you feel, we'll do everything we can to keep you cool. Incap turned to the two brothers, who watched on worriedly. Gillow still had his arm around Brushin. We need to move her away from the fire and we need as much water as we can find, Incap said. It'll be morning in a few hours. Make sure you collect the dew at first light and have it here, ready to cool her skin as the fever burns. Keep her cool and moist. That's very important. Do you understand? They nodded in agreement. And Scales, open that window. In fact, open them all. Bella needs as much cold air as she can get. As Incap and Bella's two brothers moved her to a cooler spot, Scales hurried around the room. He rolled up the square patches of material that covered each of the five windows, hidden in the nooks and crannies of the walls. Instantly, a breeze of fresh air entered and danced around the room. With the rush of cold, Bella's tiny body seemed to relax. She curled herself and tucked her knees up, and her breathing settled. Thank you, Bonnet said, letting out a sigh of relief. That's the most comfortable she's been since this afternoon. No need for thank yous, Incap answered. Then he turned his head towards her so the others wouldn't see the worried look on his face. In a lower voice, he went on. She isn't quite out of the woods yet. And he reached for Bonnet's hand. She's more comfortable, yes, but she must stay that way to keep the fever at bay. He squeezed her hand and gave a nod before turning back towards the room. Remember, as much dew as you can find at first light, he instructed the brothers again. Got it? Yes, they both said at once. We'll come back in the morning and check how Bella's getting on, Incap said to Scales. There's nothing more we can do now but wait until she rides the fever out. Incap let go of Bonnet's hand and walked towards the doorway, making sure no one could see his troubled expression. He was so confused. Never had he overworked the little mushrooms of the garden so much that they had caught a fever. He couldn't help wondering if this was his fault. Yes, it had been an extremely rainy week, but he knew how much he could push them on with their tasks. He'd been so careful to keep the smallest of the mushrooms inside, protected from the harsh weather. As Scales joined him at the entrance, Incap turned to Bonnet and said, Oh, I'm getting goosebumps again. I'm so sorry. I'll do whatever I can to help Bella. I will make this better. And with that, he and Scales went off into the night, leaving the bonnets in the flickering firelight, willing for a slide to hurry up. And we're nearly done. Dawn would break in a couple of hours. The two mushrooms knew they had a worrying day ahead of them. Incap and Scales made their way across the garden, ducking under lettuce leaves and hobbling over gravel paths. Scales couldn't help noticing the beauty of the moonlight as, as it twinkled across newly formed dewdrops. The little brown mushroom was afraid of the dark. There was no way on earth he would be out and about in the allotment at this time of night if he wasn't with his best, brave best friend, Incap. Scales, Incap said, interrupting his thoughts. You know we have to do something to help Bella. I'm not sure I could live with myself if anything happened to her. Scales gave a tight a light tug on Incap's cape. But this isn't your fault. I know you think it's because of the afternoon's work in the tunnel, but surely if anyone was going to be so worn out from the ferrying about, it'd be me. Incap turned and looked down at Scales' friendly little face. I know you don't believe it, but you are much stronger than the younger ones in the garden. I would never give any task to anyone I didn't think was right for the job. Incap paused, then continued with a glum look. This is why I'm so puzzled about it all, because I don't understand. But maybe I've worked little Bella far too hard. His face became even sadder, his shoulders heaved from a sigh. It was the first time Scales had seen his friend so gloomy. He didn't know what to say to make him feel better. It really was a mystery why Bella was so ill. And if Incap, the clever bold mushroom, couldn't work it out, then all they could do was hope. Walking a few paces... Behind, Scales tried to focus on the magical silhouettes of the plants and vegetables in the night. He imagined the long carrot greens bowing down and taking the hands of the little radish shoots, dancing and laughing as if they hadn't a care in the world. He noticed the golden onion heads, pointed and proud, peeping out from their soil beds like rockets waiting to launch into the night sky. Thump. Scales' dream was brought to an abrupt end. Incap had halted right in his tracks. It caused Scales to bump straight into him, almost knocking him to the ground. Shh, 
Incap whispered, ducking down. He pushed his hand back, warning Scales to stop and be quiet. Crouching a little further, he turned his head to the side. He was listening for something. Scales looked through the gap between the carrot tops hanging across their view. It was so still and quiet you could hear a pin drop. Then there it was, a scuttling sound. It wasn't loud, but it was there, way off in the distance. A scurrying of what sounded like many dashing feet. Pointing his nimble grey finger through the leaves, Incap mouthed, It's coming from over there, near the polytunnel. Mushrooms are so small and close to the ground, it's easy for them to pick up the teeniest of sounds, especially in the still of the night, when every other creature is sleeping. Every other creature apart from. That's it. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Talk about the cliff. I was going to actually show you more and I thought, nah, that's a canny cliffhanger, that. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Because I didn't like, I don't like reading to myself. Um, I'm buzzing. I've done it. Book two has done. See what people have been saying. I'm absolutely delighted you just came and watched, right? So thank you so, so much. This is my job. This is my job. I kind of believe it. You can order book two. You can still get book one. And there'll be many, many more books to come. Like I said, there's a very special quest in the beginning of this book. Um, I've never seen it happen in a book before. Thank you. A special thank you to... <laughs> Sarah Ball says, Melody just said... You just yelled, no, at your clip, Hannah. <laughs> um, oh, there's a weirdo on, by the way, people, so just ignore. I don't know who it is. Um, so, yes, thank you, everyone. I can't remember what I was going to say now. Yeah, I've been doing this for eight months. It took us eight months to get all of this together. I want to say a special thanks to Alexa Witten who is now, she's going to get the rest of the illustrations tomorrow, probably now, and then she'll fit them all in to where they need to be on, in the book, typesetter extraordinaire, book layout extraordinaire, cover extraordinaire, and the words that you've just heard there have been proofread by the amazing Alexa Tewkesbury. Absolute dream team. I'm so lucky that I met them, and um, I couldn't have done that without them, so... Thanks everyone, and a special thanks to The Secret World of Mushroom Marvellous. Let's have a look what people are saying. Have they edited the book? Oh, she's got the book back now, mint, mint, mint. So like all the people who support us from my group, from my Facebook, from social media, like I do lots of stuff on social media, but nothing, nothing can replace word of mouth, can it? Which is why I try and get out to events as much as possible. This was the final thing I wanted to do so I can just breathe for a week or so and <laughs> I'm going on holiday <clears throat> um, on Friday. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for your continued support. Use a mint. See you later. Ta-da!